Okay, I'm back. Sorry, you guys, if you were with me, I'm so sorry. Let's see. Refresh, refresh. Let's see if you guys can find me. Hello, everybody again. Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. And hopefully you guys can find me. Wow, that was weird. There's Alessandra, hi. You know, lesson learned. Don't push weird buttons on your Facebook Live because you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, they change, Facebook changes, Facebook stuff all the time. Good, it's perfect now, okay, good, because whew, I'm glad that, that it happened then and not, sometimes when I move my phone over to the other holder, it switches and then everything's like super zoomed in. All right, so let's see if I can share this and we can get started. Thank you for finding me, you guys. Um, yeah, there was a little button there. It was like flashing and it said, hey, come over here, push this and do, it said, do Facebook Live a different way or something. And I was trying to get rid of it and then it flipped me. Okay, but I think we're good. So let's all keep our fingers crossed that in a minute when I switch over to the other holder that that doesn't happen. You know, there's all this fancy stuff that you can get um, for Facebook Live, this software, and, and I just can't figure it out. I don't know. I've tried. I just haven't given myself enough time to figure it out. I'm so I'm not super fancy yet. Hi, Susan. You received your box of fun. Good. Yeah, good. The bag is cute, right? Has my new logo on it. I was very excited about that. Um, my retreat bags, I got those printed from discountmugs.com. Um, I've used them a few times. This time there was a little bit of ink that smeared on some of the bags, so I wasn't quite that happy with them, but they were still pretty cute. All right, so I see you guys are here. Hello, everybody. Today we are coming live on Wednesday because this is now live. Hopefully you guys have your own copy already. If not, you can see it on the website, um, but I know it's nice to have a hard copy. Um, if you don't have one, just let me know. I'm happy to send them to you. I actually had a couple um, returned back to me this week for wrong addresses. So if you're missing yours, if you thought I sent it to you, let me know. I think these were apartment addresses. Sometimes those don't stay long, stay around. People don't stay in apartments quite as long as they do a house. So um, if you need one, just let me know. Message me or email me. I'd be happy to send you one. So this is the 2018 Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. The cover is always lots of fun to look at. Lots and lots of inspiration. You know, it's funny. I just designed a class using this set and Honestly, I was having like some creative block. I couldn't quite get what was in my head out onto paper. And then when I when I was finally done um, typing up the directions, I pulled out the catalog to look up the name of something and I saw that on the front and I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. I didn't even see it. So like little hidden treasures on the front of the catalog. So this catalog is good from today until January 2nd, okay? So we've got a while. Majority of it is Christmas because I think that's the majority of crafting we do kind of starting late October, we really start focusing our all of our attention on Christmas things. So majority is Christmas. However, the back half has tons of stuff that's not Christmas and that's kind of where I am starting. I'm not ready for Christmas, you guys. It's a thousand degrees outside and Christmas is kind of stressful. I'm just not ready to go there. So I've really been focusing on the stuff in the back of the catalog. Um, there are some really, really cute stuff. I'm gonna go through starting at the back and show you a couple of my favorite things before we get started. I've got some projects to show you, some sneak peek projects, um, things you'll see later on in my blog. Um, it's kind of funny at this time of the year, I'm designing a ton of stuff, but I can't show any of it yet. I'm designing classes or designing for um, different, I'm doing a big training with my team. I've designed a bunch of stuff for that, but I can't show the projects yet. So I've got all these things that I can't show you, um, but they'll be coming, I promise. All right, so if you have your catalog, get your catalog ready so you can look at it with me and we can ooh and ah. The first thing I want you to, I want you to start in the back, the very back. We've got two new Hostess sets and I don't even have these yet. We couldn't order these on pre-order, but I ordered them today and I'm giving them away as prizes. So today over on my blog, that's what the prize is. Both of the hostess sets in the back, okay? 
A hostess set you can only get when you spend $150. Then you earn what we call Stampin' Rewards, and these can only be purchased with your Stampin' Rewards. So that little chart's on page 52 in case you're wondering. And, um, you know, originally these were designed for hostesses who were hosting workshops, but now some of us just do all of our shopping online, and if you order $150, you start earning these, what we used to call um, hostess rewards, and now they're called Stampin' Rewards. So anyway, make sure you look at that chart, because if you're near, if you're close to 150, it's worth it to bump your order up so you can start earning free stuff. Okay, so page 50 and 51, we're going to the back. Halloween, of course, is always my favorite. The back punch you will see quite a bit in the next two months for me. But the one I want to, well, there's two here I wanna show you. This, of course, was the takeout treat box framelits. You guys know I love a good little container, especially if it's a framelit that we can just cut out. Um, so I immediately had to have that. So let me show it to you because it's tiny. It's supposed to look like um, a takeout box, you know, like a Chinese food takeout box. Look how cute and tiny it is. See in my hand how little it is? It's so cute and tiny. In the picture, it's hard to tell the size of it. It looks kind of big, I think, on page 51, but it's tiny. Uh, you can get two whole boxes out of one full sheet of cardstock. So a half sheet, you cut two of these and you put them together to make one. Does that make sense? Two complete boxes from one piece of cardstock. Um, so it's real cute, it's real tiny, it's very easy to put together. Maybe next week we'll do these on Facebook Friday because you guys gotta see them, they're so cute. All right, so there's that, the tree containers. And then so, oh also there's a little stamp set there that doesn't have the framelits matching. It's called Trick or Tweet. I think I called it something wrong to my team. Twick or treat? I don't know. This one right here, it's super cute. If you love little cutesy um, images, this one's for you. I've done a couple of things and it's a sneak peek. So if you're in my, if you're on my team, close your eyes because I want you to be surprised. Um, this is what we're doing at our team meeting. Look how cute he is. And look at the, the buffalo check that we're doing today. There's, these are really fun to, to color in with your stamp and blends. Perfect for that. So that's the trick or tweet. I think I was calling it, <laughs> I think I was calling it something wrong. Anyway, trick or tweet. Okay, so then go back one page, 48 and 49. This is where I have been living the last two weeks, right here. I designed a class. You guys have seen that, hopefully, that cauldron, it's got a weird name, cauldron bubble. I like toil and trouble better but the bundle itself is called Cauldron Bubble. The paper is adorable. Um, all of it's adorable, really. Uh, we're gonna use some of that today, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. I just wanna show you the little witch. She is a stamp that you can color, and then it has a matching framelit, but then the framelit also will cut out some of the witches on the designer series paper also. So that's really, really fun. Um, here's another, okay, this is a stamp club project, so if you're in my stamp club, close your eyes, because I want you to be surprised. Here's a Halloween card, and I colored the hat today for one of our projects. We're gonna cut the hat out with a framelit, but these for my club cards, I colored them with Stampin' Blends. Isn't that just fun and festive? I really, really love the color combination that they've put with the Halloween stuff. Um, one other little thing I'm gonna show you is the paper, that Toil and Trouble paper, so cute, and it is Halloween, but there's a whole sheet of pumpkins. So I made this little tag for something else that's going on, and it's not Halloween-y, but it is the Halloween paper. See how that works? It's just pumpkins, so you can use it for, um, you know, like fall. Cute. Okay, okay, well, there's that. So if you just joined us, we're looking at the catalog quickly, but only the back half. Well, mostly the back half. So we're going from the back to the front. So turn to page 46. This set called Many Blessings. And this is one of our million dollar achievers, Ruth Snyder. She designed that stamp set and she must have read my mind because I love a stamp set that can do pumpkins and fall and Christmas and this is it. And I've done a couple of things. Here's the little pumpkins. 
Um, definitely coloring. There's a lot of coloring going on. I hope you guys have your Stampin' Blends or your watercolor pencils um, because there's a lots, of, lots of things to color. And then this one is a sneak peek I'm not supposed to show you. It's from the tutorial bundle this month. I'm just gonna show you real fast. Okay, look how cute. Okay, that's all I'm gonna show you. It's in the tutorial bundle this month, which by the way, we're having a blog hop on Friday. You'll be able to see all of it on Friday. I have not even had time to post about this month, but September's is really good, and you'll earn it when you spend $50. Okay, 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 I'm trying to go quickly because we've got a lot of stamping and I've got to pick my child up from school. Um, okay, go backwards in the catalog to 45. I think this is really the fall set and it's gorgeous. It's got this framelit. Look at it. it it's um, very intricate. You want to use your precision base plate when you use that. I will have a class with this in October. This is my next class to design. I am in love with this set. So um, if you're wanting that, you might want to hold off and get it with a class. Um, here's another little sneak peek that I can't tell you what it's for, but Anyway, I just had to show you how beautiful that stamp is, right? I mean, that framelit, gorgeous. And then the stamp set, of course, beautiful uh, fonts and stuff. Okay, so that's mostly what I pulled to show you. Go back one more page, page 42 and 41, this whole set. You guys have seen and heard me talking about this, I think. This is probably my second favorite thing in the whole catalog. And I, I think I showed you these on the blog. This was something I made for my team for our swap. If, well, we're using it today, so I won't spend a whole lot of time right now. Love this, I um, am in love with it. But the number one thing that I'm in love with is the Buffalo Check background stamp. You guys are funny, I got so many messages when you saw, um, when you guys saw this in the catalog, everybody was messaging me, oh my gosh, I have a Buffalo Check stamp, it's just for you. So yes, uh, we're gonna pretend like it says Erica's Buffalo Check because I'm in love with it, it's so cute. It's a background stamp, we're gonna use it today. Here's another, this uses that Country Home, super, super cute. Um, all right, so Country Home, here's one more. This is from the class that I've got. By the way, the class deadline is next week. If you want that country home class, you need to make sure to um, register for that. Okay, so that's all the time I'm gonna spend because later on we'll get to Christmas. I, I don't know, are you guys ready with for Christmas? Whew. Here's the buffalo check on page 38. Um, there's some really, really cute Christmas stuff there in here, but I just, my brain is having a hard time. Today we're using, on page 25, we are using some Christmas stuff. And I will talk to you about that stuff when we get there, okay? So I'm gonna leave that open there. Okay, so that's my little preview. How did you get such a good image with it? Kathy, with a buffalo check, we're gonna use that today and I'm gonna talk to you about it. Um, there, I do have some tips on that buffalo check background stamp. Oh, Sarah says you're always ready for Christmas. Oh, not me. See, I'm always ready for pumpkins, but I'm not always ready for Christmas. Christmas is just kind of stressful expensive <laughs> okay let's do some prizes and then we're gonna get ready to stamp um so a week and a half ago facebook live i asked you guys to share and i always appreciate when you share the video um you can share it on your page or you can share it in a group or anywhere you think that people might enjoy watching crafty projects and so again this week i'll have prizes for that i'm going to show you in a second um but but a week and a half ago, I said I was going to give three prizes to three people who shared the video, and they are kits from, they're make and take kits from past Facebook Fridays. So Susan Rasmussen, I have your address, Susan, I'll send that to you. Marianne McGinnis, Marianne, I don't know if I have your um, address. If, will you just email me please, Marianne, your, your address. It's much easier if I can get, get it in an email. And then Kar uh, Kim, Scotchfield, I don't have your address either. So Kim, please send me your mailing address and I will get these out to you. Thank you everybody who shared. I always am grateful for that. Um, and this week, this week's prizes, I have good prizes this week for sharing. Oh, I see people are sharing right now and you don't even know what the prize is, so thank you. I've got two 
stamp sets from the catalog to non-Christmas stamp sets. Well, although this says wishing you a season filled with beauty and joy. I think that might might be Christmas, <laughs> but I think he's Halloween or fall, don't you? All right, so still night. And this really, oh, well, this one has Christmas too, but this is one that'll take you all the way through. Um, gratitude, thankful, happy Christmas. All right, so I will choose two winners out of everybody who shares the video um, next week for this. Now, um, I told you, um, you wanna hop over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, find, scroll down, and you'll see there's a little widget, it's called Raffle Copter, and it's gonna ask you to enter to win, and this week, oh, last week, I need to tell you what I gave away last week. Last week, I had paper pumpkins. So I've got two paper pumpkin winners, Mike, he's on my team, so I have your address, and Darlene, I think that we, I think I may have your address, but Darlene, if you see this, if you'll send me your address, that will save me from uh, trying to find it. So congratulations, you guys. Speaking of Paper Pumpkin, if you love Halloween, you need to get signed up for Paper Pumpkin because the Halloween kit that comes out this month, it's Halloween. So make sure that you've signed up and that you, um, and I've even upped my number of kits because I, and I know I'm gonna want several of them. Okay, so this week, Go over to my blog, enter, scroll down, enter, and I'm giving away the hostess sets from the holiday catalog. I don't even have them to show you yet, but I'm giving away the hostess set. So if you would like a hostess set, go over and enter to win. All right, you guys, I think we're ready. If you have not joined me for Facebook Friday before, it's not Friday, Facebook Wednesday. Today is our Facebook Live for this week. I'm not gonna do one on Friday. This qualifies as that. Um, I always have a hostess code attached to my Facebook Live, and if you put in an order by Monday, still same as normal, by Monday night, using that hostess code, I will send you all three make and takes for free next week in the mail. It has to be Monday night, um, because Tuesday morning, that's the first thing on my schedule. I get up and I cut them all and get them ready and out into the mail. So you have to have it in by Monday night, and you have to use that hostess code unless your order is over $150. If your order is over $150, you're gonna get stamp and rewards like I told you in the beginning of um, this live, and you get some freebies. I would rather you get those freebies than to use the hostess code. However, I am still gonna send you the make and takes. If I see you put in an order that's over $150, you are automatically gonna get those make and takes even if you didn't use the hostess code. Now the hostess code, where can you find it? It's gonna be down here when I start working, you'll see it, but also, it's on the PDF, so I always have a PDF ready. It's got all the, the products I use, the product numbers, so if you wanna order anything that I show you today, it's all there for you. Hop over to pinkbuckaroo.com, scroll down, it's under the fourth picture this week, click on it, and it's a PDF. You can print it, save it, do whatever you want, and it also has the measurements, but the hostess code is right there. Okay, all right, you guys, I think we are ready to stamp. Here comes the awkward time where I have to switch you over. So please look away. If you don't like to be jostled around, there's our trash can out in our front yard. It's trash day. Normally on Fridays, you don't see that because it's not trash day. Okay, so let me get you adjusted. Now, guys, tell me if it's crooked because I cannot stand to see it crooked. Tell me what it looks like. Does it look like it's straight? I also have to turn down my fan because it gets very shaky if I don't. All right, so I can see you guys here. Make sure, ooh, it looks crooked. You guys didn't tell me. Hold on, let's see. I know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. And what I can't stand is that I see it in my feed all week and then it's crooked and it drives me crazy. Okay, I think we're good. All right, Cindy says it's crooked. Okay, how's it now, Cindy? What does it look like? All right, so here are our three projects. Usually I try to use just one stamp set or bundle, um, but I wanted to show you my favorite things from the catalog. Um, so I picked kind of a handful of my favorite things. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, of course, with my number one favorite thing, and that's that buffalo check. Um, and then my number two favorite thing has to be country home stamp set. I love it. If you guys watch HGTV, if you're into rustic farmhouse like me, then you're gonna like this stamp set. I do have a couple of other little samples to show you. 
Um, these are part of my country home class. And a stamp club card, shh, it's a secret. But you can see how beautiful it is. You can use the big can, or you can use the little um, pitcher, which is what we're using today. I don't know if you guys can hear the bunny, he's in here. He was asleep all afternoon and suddenly now he's, he's alive. He's saying hello to all his, his stamping friends that got to see him next last week. All right, now let me tell you, look at my hands. Um, today, I pre-recorded all these on a clean recording. And <laughs> this is Blackberry Bliss, which is um, a very dark, potent ink. And I went to re-ink my ink pad and it got all over me. This is even like from just now. I don't know. I, I cleaned my hands a ton and I could not get it all off. So we're using Blackberry Bliss. Please forgive the mess on my hands. And we're going to actually do this part first and do the, the, the Buffalo check last because it's so juicy. <laughs> That's the word I'll use, juicy. And I'm afraid I'll get it on this project if we do this second. So let's go ahead and start with this part. And this is a really the fun part. I'm gonna stamp the picture in Memento Black because I'm using blends. Blends are alcohol-based markers. And so you need to use a water-based ink. Um, gotta have a water and an alcohol. So if you have an alcohol ink, use a water. No, if you have a alcohol marker, use a water-based ink. I'm a little off-centered, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think it'll be all right. So so anyways, alcohol markers, water-based ink. And here are all the colors we're gonna use. We're using Blackberry Bliss, which is new in the holiday catalog. We're using Old Olive, Crumb Cake, Smoky Slate, and the color Lifter, just in case. All right, let's start with the little chippy, the chippy um, pitcher. It looks like I stamped mine hovering up a little bit. You know what? We're just gonna we're gonna do it over, right? We, that's why cardstock has two two sides, and I'm not gonna talk and I'm gonna focus. All right. Now the measurements for this piece of paper are over on that PDF. Okay. If you want to get all the measurements. Now the problem is I cannot see with this camera. So let's see. Again, I did a little off-center, but it's lined up a little bit better there. Okay, we're going with it. Now, um, we're gonna start with light smoky slate. And I'm gonna kind of just go around the edges, all the way down, kind of curving it. When you have a container or something that you are coloring that is rounded or a cylinder, you want to leave a shine mark there in the rounded, the round, rounded surface that is closest to you. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of leave that there. Then I'm gonna take my dark smoky slate and go again down the sides and across the bottom, curving it, but not going out as far as I did. Now go back with your light smoky slate and start just kind of blending that out. And then eventually coming in and going over. That way you're just going over that, that um, center part one time. Because each time you go over it, you're building color and making it darker. And this would be darker around the edges. All right, there's your your lesson on lighting today. And, and believe me, I'm no expert. I, have, I really have very little knowledge of all that, but I do know that you want to make the outer edges darker when it's rounded. All right, so this plant, how, is there anybody who's watching know what this foliage is called? This little, like a cabbage flower. I don't know names at all of plants, especially the ones in these two bouquets. <laughs> and I wish that I did. So you need to tell me what they're called if you know. This, I went over it first with a light Blackberry Bliss, and now I'm gonna take the dark 
and just kind of go into those areas where the petals are overlapping each other just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the light again and blend up that color a little bit. Okay, now an artichoke, Sarah, an artichoke. Come on, really? It does look like an artichoke, but would that be in a flower arrangement? I don't know. It does look like an artichoke and I colored it purple. <laughs> it, it looks good purple. Can an artichoke be purple? I don't know. I think anything can be Blackberry Bliss. What about these funky little leaves that I'm going over right now? What do you guys think these are? When you're looking at them close up, they look really strange. But then when you pull back and look, it all makes sense. Um, they're very strange. And I have seen people coloring these things all different colors. So don't be afraid. You can really do whatever you want. Let's see, artichoke joy, you say artichoke also. Well, you guys would know better than me. They do put them in arrangements, huh? Interesting. All right, now I'm gonna go in with my dark old olive here, kind of where there's kind of a grouping of more lines. That's where I'm adding the darker colors, just kind of sporadically in there. And of course, where they're overlapping, you wanna add in a little bit of dark. All right, so Sarah and Joy, what about the other, the other arrangement in this stamp set? It has the little thing with the holes in it. And I've seen it a thousand times at the craft store and in flower arrangements. What is that thing called? Because I would really like to know. And I don't even know, I've thought about searching it and I don't even know what to search because I can't search little round thing with holes in it. The sample is green in the catalog, is it, Stephanie? That just shows how much I've paid attention to details. People have been competing cotton purple and <laughs> coloring the cotton. Well, you know, you could color it whatever you want. If you want red cotton, you can have red cotton. Some kind of pod, Joy, yes, you're right, pod. That, that's exactly what it is. I like it because you can readily buy those at the craft store. All right, so Blackberry Bliss on the berries and light old olive. I don't know if my mom is on here, but my mom would probably know what they're called. I have thought about asking her. She's at school today. I don't know if she's watching, but she'll watch later and she'll probably school us all and tell us. It's a fun little coloring assignment, I think, different. All right, last but not least, let's take the crumb cake. And now these are cattails, right, guys? I, that is one thing I do think I know, cattails. We don't have those here in South Texas, but it's pretty common, right? And go over those little, dark, those little dots with a darker crumb cake, and it looks kind of dog but I'm not gonna say that to you guys because it's that wouldn't be very fancy a hot dog I didn't have to use my color lifter at all all right so there you go now let's let's do some attaching this is early espresso you found a picture totally looks like artichoke but I found a purple one okay good all right Trisha just validated my purple artichoke thank you okay so let's do the buffalo check and I have to tell you guys that this Buffalo Check stamp has been living on my Stamparatus since it arrived. It has not been taken off one time. That's how much I've been using it. I actually stamped this, I estimated this morning, probably I've done a hundred things with this so far because at the retreat I was working on some projects that I needed 45 of one and 30 of another and then I did some other things. So I think that this guy has been used a hundred times already. And I, because I was mass producing, I wanted to only use a quarter sheet of cardstock. Normally I would stick a half sheet of white in there, stamp it, and then cut it down. Um, but I, because I was making so many, I didn't want to waste that much cardstock. So I got my quarter sheet of cardstock, like I'm getting, I'm already getting this ink on me. 
So I cut down a quarter sheet and I put tape around it. A lot, I used those grid lines. And then I laid down my stamp here. <laughs> it's already all on me, where is it? Um, so I laid my stamp on it, then I picked it up with the plate. So that's what I've been doing with the um, Stamparatus and the Buffalo Chuck. Now, um, I have done this in lots of colors. One day, I even just started stamping it in a whole bunch of different colors just so that I could see what it looks like. And I have not found one color yet that it did not look good or it did not work. What I have found, and I found out this weekend when I was making 70 something, is that you want your stamp pad to be pretty juicy with this. Um, so hence the reason I have Blackberry Bliss all over me. Make sure your stamp pad is juicy. Ink your, um, your stamp, lay your paper down, and stamp. Now if it's pretty juicy, you probably won't need to stamp again. However, you might. And if you have this set here, like that, it should be in the perfect place for you to stamp again. This is why I like to use a bigger sheet because when I'm using a sheet this size, I can't use the magnet and I can't put it in the corner. So, let's see, I don't know. Let's try it again because it has these little dots right here. Like it didn't stamp all the way. So let's see. You need to purchase the extra magnets. No, you don't, that's a great question. You don't need, look at that, whoa, it's beautiful. You don't need to, to purchase those extra magnets. That is a great question. Um, your Stamparatus will come with two magnets here on the back, and the reason they have extra magnets is because those magnets are so strong. I'm gonna put this where I'm not gonna put my hand down into it. Those magnets are so strong that they um, have a tendency to snap together. They attract one another and they snap together with such force that they break. So that was happening in the beginning when the Stamparatus came out. And so Stamping Up promised that we would be able to buy extra magnets. So if your magnets snap together, you will want to be able to buy extra ones. However, I put, I think you saw them, I put duct tape on them. And they have not, I'm getting, look, look guys, <laughs> Blackberry Bliss, what is it? It's crazy. Um, so I put, um, let's put that down. I wanna get all my hands, get it all over my hands. I put duct tape on mine almost immediately and they have not, they have actually snapped together a couple of times, but the duct tape seems to protect them. They're just super, super strong um, magnets. And they do come with two. All right, so I'm talking so much. I gotta, I gotta pick up the pace here, guys. <laughs> All right, we're using the corrugated embossing folder. Uh, we used this last time. I told you that if you put it through with the stripes going this way, um, it is has a tendency of breaking that paper. So I found that if you put it in going this way, that it doesn't do that. Um, now there's lots of talk out there about how your embossing folder should go through. Um, I was always told that the seam here needed to be facing out. However, someone told me recently that was the absolute opposite of what I was supposed to do, and so there you have it. All right, so this is the galvanized paper we used last time, and I, I love it a lot. I have actually gone through pretty much everything that I bought during pre-order, and it looks like galvanized metal. All right, now what did I do? I'll put it over here so it wouldn't get lost. Our beautiful little foliage arrangement with artichoke. <laughs> All right. Oh, you thought it was black in the original card, Mary. Interesting. Yeah, it's Blackberry Bliss. And you know what? I, You guys, if you have been around me for at least the last year, you know I was obsessed with our black and white buffalo check um, DSP we had last Christmas. And black and white buffalo check is my favorite. 
but I haven't done black yet and I've seen a couple of things um, online that were done in the black and white and they're beautiful I need to do that this is the new galvanized button and this is blackberry bliss twine nature's twine it's in the annual catalog it's that twine that has four different colors in the pack oh I cut that too short there we go I think that'll be mm, no um four different colors in the pack which I which I love because you're getting four four different you know options and one of them is Blackberry Bliss. All right, so there's the card. I did not want to mess up my, I liked how everything went. I didn't want to mess it up with a sentiment. So I am gonna put the sentiment in the middle and I'm probably gonna get Blackberry Bliss all over this white paper because it's all over me. I made my ink pad pretty juicy. I think I went overboard a bit. All right, here's a sentiment from the country home stamp set that I love simply thankful for all the good things and you know this sentiment is big enough that it can just be your focal point like I showed you on that tag and there you have it you guys so cute I love it I haven't used blackberry bliss much since it came back and I love it all right look at my hands I'm gonna do a real quick let's see what I can use hopefully I can get some of this off I wish I had a sink in here, but I don't. Oh, thanks for the hearts, you guys. Um, how many of you have ordered the Buffalo Check? If you're a demonstrator, you could have already ordered it. If you're not a demonstrator, you can order it now. Um, it's a background stamp. Like I said, you can get it in clear mount, which is what we used, which means it goes on a clear block or the Stamparatus, or you can get it in wood mount. It's $15, clear, $15 for clear mount, $20 for um, wood mount. And I like clear mount because you can stamp it a couple of times. Those background stamps, sometimes you can't get equal pressure all the way around, but that stamp apparatus really um, allows you to re-stamp so that you have that clean, solid image. Okay, I see you guys. Oh, I see raising your hand, yep. All right, it's such a good one. You gotta have it. I'm gonna be using it a ton, I promise you. You're gonna want it. All right, next project, Halloween, yay. Cauldron Bubble. I told you it's kind of a weird name, but it's a super cute set. Coordinating framelits. Um, the framelit that we're gonna use today is the, the witch's hat. So on those, my Stamp Club projects I showed you, I stamped it and colored them and then cut them out. But today we're gonna cut out the designer series paper. This is another brilliant move by Stamping Up where they've made the paper um, coordinate with a framelit. So you can cut out the cauldron, the ghost, the cat, the witch, I don't know if there's a broom on there, I can't remember, the hat. Um, anyway, I love when you can do that because sometimes you just don't want to color, right? Sometimes you just don't want to, but the paper will uh, make it so you don't have to. All right, so this is a gum slider. We've made these before, but I found this gum, here it is. I linked it on my blog. It's Lime Passion Fruit Twist and it's, I'd never seen it before, but I was at my grocery store and it was right there in the checkout line with the gum. So it wasn't anything in a fancy spot. It was at our local grocery store called H-E-B. If you're not from Texas, you probably don't know H-E-B, but it's our biggest grocery store here. Um, but it's also on Amazon. And when I saw it, I was like, hello, Granny Apple Green and Gorgeous Grape, you are perfect Halloween colors. So I, we had to make a Halloween treat with it. So that's what we're gonna do. And you, know, you guys, you know, when you're designing Halloween projects in August, it's a little tricky because there's not a lot of Halloween candy available. So you have to make do with what you can find. Now that back to school is done, hopefully there will be more Halloween candy out soon. All right, so this is Granny Apple Green cardstock, four and a fourth by five and a half. Remember, these measurements are over on my blog today on the PDF. You're gonna score the long side at two and an eighth, and two and a half, four and five eighths, and five, and then the short side at three eighths, and three fourths. It's very narrow, as you'll see. All right, now I'm not gonna do anything super fancy to this, 
because we're gonna cute, put the cute little frog paper on there, it doesn't really need much. Just gonna burnish all those lines. And then I'm gonna cut out some of these bottom portions. There are four squares down here, and we're gonna cut those all the way out. All right, now in the center section, we're gonna leave these two tabs down here. <gasps> Sandy, really? Target's putting out their Halloween candy now. Oh my gosh. There was something else. Pam posted something today that, uh, uh, some treats, little Debbie treats that I was like, okay, it's time to make a run to Target. Um, okay, so here we go. Do you see how I cut this out? These are, there's two squares and two long rectangles. So this is what you have left. This tab right here, I'm gonna cut the corners off of, okay? That's gonna make it easy to fold in. Now on this, actually let's do both. I'm gonna put here on this end tab, I am going to put tear and tape, all right? And then down here on that little tab that we cut the corners, put some tear and tape. And we're gonna put it together. Let's not take them both off at the same time because then it'll stick to my paper. All right, so the side one you fold in, and if you fold this over, it will match. In fact, if you fold it flat, it will match perfectly. See how that is? I love when that happens. All right, so that's your box. Now we're gonna take this and fold them in. You guys, I have recorded clean videos of these. They will be on YouTube maybe by tonight. I have not done any editing. They're all on my phone still. Uh-oh, I put it too far. Um, so that way, if you wanna come back and make these, you can watch the shorter version. I need my bone folder for this. Push that in right there. All right, there we go. So there's your box, and it is a tight fit, okay? It's a perfect fit, <laughs> as I don't get it in there. There we go. It's a really tight fit. I made it tight, okay? Now take the gorgeous grape ribbon and loop it around like that. This is gonna help you pull this out of that box. And slide it down. See how it slides in and out like that? All right, this gorgeous grape ribbon is like my on my bestsellers list for myself. I have ordered more bolts of this gorgeous grape striped ribbon than anything else I think this, this uh, the last few months. It's a great ribbon. It's flat. It's not too wide, but not too skinny. And it's that beautiful grape color. All right, so there you, you go. You just tie a bow, slide it in and out. All right, now we're going to put our frog DSP. This paper has the hats on the back. So if you're looking in the pack, that's where it is. And we're just going to put that right in the center. And now we're gonna do some cutting. We need to stamp our little frog first. We're gonna color him in. And he's real tiny. Uh-oh, I took my black away, hold on. He's super tiny. So you gotta make sure that you don't lose him after you cut him out. See how tiny he is? A little frog with a witch's hat, so funny, I think. All right, let's color him in really quickly. It doesn't take long for him. Granny apple green light. Don't color in his eyes, which I always accidentally do. I'm gonna leave his eyes white. And then go with a darker. Like this, kind of around the bottom. And then the light, and just pull it up, blend it up. The top part of him will be the lightest. All right, so we are going to cut out the witch's hat. I can find the framelits. And you know, you could do any one. I'm pretty sure that this framelit will cut out any of the hats on the paper. And then we're gonna cut out, here's the frog. Here's his little tiny framelit. And the spider web. We're gonna use this black shiny paper, and I can't remember what it's called, I always forget. I have it written down, black foil. It's shiny, it's, I don't know, I feel like it should be called something else than foil. Black shiny paper. We're gonna cut that web out of there. So let's bring the big shot over. Oh, I wanna see what you guys are saying, but then I'll, I'll stop. And I just can't stop. Post an idea, use the frog paper as a frog prince. Yeah, he's cute. He's not like an evil frog or, a, <laughs> you know, like you'd think for Halloween. He's real cute. 
All right, so I'm, I think I'm gonna do this hat right here. All right, framelit will behave itself. Now this frog is so tiny that the framelit likes to hop around. See what I did there? He likes to hop around, but he, I think he might stay in place there, we'll see. All right, and then the black web. All right, now little frogs, stay where you're supposed to be. If your little frog framelit hops around and he won't stay in the place where he's supposed to be, just stick a post-it note on top of him. The tinier the framelit, the more likely they're gonna hop around between those magnets that are inside your um, magnetic platform. The big ones are always good, but the tiny ones seem to jump around. So this spider web, um, comes out beautifully. They just, I don't know, it cuts really, really well. Poke all those out. And then our hat. There he is, so cute. I don't know why it's a he, it should be a she. There she is, the witch's hat. I am rereading, um, oh, now, um, I can't remember it. What's the name of it? The All Souls Trilogy, have any of you read it? Um, why can I not remember the name? Suddenly I can't remember the name. It'll come to me. It's, one of you will know. But anyway, she's a witch and she doesn't want to be a witch. And they're making a TV show out of it. And so I'm rereading it. All right, so this is a Starburst, Vellum Starburst. And we're going to put that down with a dimensional. Now this spider web is tricky to, to glue down. You need to use your fine tip glue, uh, glue pen or better yet, the adhesive sheets. But when you're sandwiching it in between something like we're doing here, you can just take a dimensional and stick it like that. All right. And then I'm looking for, I'm waiting for somebody to tell me what book is it that I'm reading? Discovery of Witches. That's it. Have any of you read Discovery of Witches? It came out several years ago and it's a trilogy. And uh, they've made um, a TV show of, of on the books in the UK, I think. And it's coming out next week, but not in the United States. I have to wait, I think, until January. Anyway, okay, we're almost done. So anyway, that's what I was thinking about. Every time I get this witch out, I'm thinking about the witch in the book, Diana. Yes, the TV show, yes, Trisha, you should, if you guys like to read, um, it's not um, a scary, book. It is kind of a, I guess you would consider it fantasy because it does have witches and other creatures, but it's, she's a historian and, uh, I don't know. I really liked it the first time. I'm actually listening to it and reading it. The audiobook's excellent. I listen to audiobooks a lot while I work. Okay. I, di I digress. I stamped this in gorgeous grape on a scrap piece of Whisper White and I'm just going to put a V on one side. If I had my punch handy, I would punch it, but I don't. So we're just gonna do it like that and put a dimensional behind it and put it right there. Oh, come on, behave. There we go. Trick or treat, how cute. Gum slider, project number two, what do you guys think? These would be fun. I was thinking, you know, I am always trying to avoid sugar. And this time of the year is the hardest when all the candy comes out and everybody's got sweets and pumpkin this and pumpkin that. Um, and gum is always a good treat um, to give to people who don't want to eat candy. Um, some sugar-free gum in your mouth will help you from not eating all that candy. So anyways, I like to make gum treats because I can eat the gum and not feel guilty. All right, so there we go. Project number two is done. Now, project number three, how am I doing on time? Oh no, we've got 10 minutes. I think I can do it because this one's easy. Project number three is our Christmas project this year, or this year, <laughs> this week. And it's featuring some paper that I have not really talked much about. Um, this month, September, Stampin' Up! has a added bonus for anybody who spends over $250. Um, if it, it can be on an individual order of $250, or a group order, like a workshop or a party. Um, so if you want this paper, you can get your friends together to put your orders together, and it's free. Um, so it's called Dashing Along, and it's 12 by 12, and there are four sheets of each pattern. 
and it's um, heavyweight. It's not um, super heavyweight, but it's like, um, it's not the light paper like we, like we have sometimes. It would be great for Christmas card making. This is the one we're using today. It's Garden Green. And then Cherry Cobbler is the other color. And some of these patterns are a little bit retro. If you've been around the Stamping Up world for a while, you'll recognize some of them. They brought back some of the popular patterns. So anyway, that's the paper that we're using. This card has no stamping on it. The star of the show here are these adorable little framelits that I told you I would tell you a little bit more about. This is called the Nothing Sweeter Bundle, and they're little, like, cookies. And um, I have played with it a little bit, but I really, really like these framelits. I'm going to show you why. They have stitching. You guys, I love shapes with stitching. Stitching is one of my favorite things. So when I got this, I just was super excited. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut out these cute little guys right here. And um, they have the little stitching on them. Now, they come in... Two, you, ha you have two shapes to, to you know, um, to cut out. You know, if you stamp it, you can cut it out, the outline. That's what I'm trying to say. Hello. Um, so like the heart. You have the outline of the heart. But then if you want the stitching, you lay this part inside like that. Now, this was part of one of the cards that I uh, made a ton of this weekend. And I cut a ton of these out. And I will tell you that the little inside guys like to jump around. This one especially, the little, the little gift. He's, he may behave. The trick is to let the framelit go where it wants and then move the paper. The magnet will put it where it needs to be and then you just move your paper so that it can, it will be um, held on. All right, now the other part of this is this little stitching. There's a scallop and the little chevron, the zigzag. And it doesn't cut your paper out. It's just gonna put texture, those stitch lines on your paper, okay? So this is a little piece, I believe three-fourths by four. And we're gonna run them all the way through. And let's see. So we've got a real red stitched heart. Look, so sweet. And then we've got, okay, I don't know if Sue's watching, but Sue, I'm putting my framelits back where they belong. I don't have my, my framelit holder she made me here, so I've got to make sure I put them back in the right place. Here's the little garden green Christmas tree. And then the Daffodil Delight gift or present. I will probably do a class on this. I like this set a lot. And so I might do a class on this. And there's that stitching. Fun! Faux stitching is always better than real stitching. Well, maybe I shouldn't say better. Maybe I should say easier than real stitching. <laughs> okay, so watch how quickly this card goes together. We've got a garden green card base. And then here's that designer series paper. Um, it's got that, you know, book print on the back. And I'm going to put that in the center. And then here's a little strip of the book print. It's just a one and a half by four. All right, and then I'm gonna do the stitching, the white stitching piece. This would be um, fun to maybe mass produce when you don't wanna do a whole lot of stamping. All right, now let's get our cute little, our little shapes. Of course, we're gonna use dimensionals. Let's do the yellow, the Daffodil Delight present here, and the Garden Green Tree over here and the real red heart in the center. Now, I did play around with some sentiments and some stamps, and I just couldn't get anything to work the way I wanted it. So I pulled out these. These are the Festive Farmhouse Elements. That's what they're called. They're, you can see the back of them are wood, and the front is this matte gray color, and you could ink that easily. However, I liked it in the gray, and so let's see, one thing I wanna warn you about is be very careful when you're punching these out because I broke one and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> so just carefully punch those out using your, maybe your paper piercer. Oh, well the little tail broke off. That Joy, that's the one I broke last time. He's, he's particular, but we can put him back together. 
it's not bad enough that I can't use them. Um, I was a little too rough with them when they first when I first opened them up. They're laser cut, so they're um, you know delicate. All right, do you think I can put this back on? Let's see this tiny little piece. Really, it would be okay. It's just the very end of that Y. Oh yeah, it'll go. There we go. All right, so be careful when you use your wood or your farmhouse elements. Learn from my mistake. And this really needs a glue pen because this is this is too tiny for this glue dot. But if you fold the glue dot and roll it around a little bit, it'll fit. Hmm. Okay, there we go. There's the dot. So Joy. So we've got Joy, we've got Mary, and we've got Noel. So cute. You could use any of them. And the last thing I did was another one of these awesome galvanized buttons. You guys are really neat. They are kind of div kind of has a divot in it. <laughs> I don't know why I love it. It just is really neat. And it's kind of um I don't know, it's not flat, but it lays nicely on the card. I'm tying a garden green baker's twine bow. And did you guys see how big this is? This is a really big bolt of twine. It's the regular amount that we normally have, but it's thicker. And it has two colors in it. And sometimes the two color twine is hard to tie, but this one is not at all. The colors stay together. They don't twist. And I can see us using this a lot. It would be great for just wrapping around your presents. Put that in the middle and we are done. See how quickly that card came together? It was nice and easy. All right, so let's look. Oh, look, here's all three of them. Noelle, Mary, and Joy. Boom, I've got three cards done for Christmas, you guys, and it's only September 5th, yay! All right, let's look at what we made. Let me get our projects back. And where's my gun slider? Now remember that these are the make and takes I will send you for free if you use this hostess code this week, anytime between now and Monday. Um, sometimes you guys ask if you can get um, other things, like I have other hostess codes that go with other things like Stamp Club and um, other things. So this is strictly for this hostess code. You can't double dip. You have to use them individually. Um, if you if you want to combine something, you have to email me and you have to make sure that you put in an order for each of the items that you're getting. Um, I do different incentives all the time. So you have to kind of pick which one that you want to earn. Um, so anyways, these will be your free make and takes that I will send in the mail to you. Um, probably Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning and your order needs to be in by Monday. All right, you guys, I have just a couple minutes. Let's see. Um, you go, oh, I, I did need to remind you too of the country home class. I believe that deadline is coming right up September 10th, I think. I'm not even 100% sure, but look, here are the projects. Let me get the other two. If you haven't gotten the country home stuff yet, you can order it with the class to go and you get these five fun make and takes and the 10 tile and the braided linen trim and five projects that are so fun. So don't forget to do that. That is coming up shortly. And I've also got the, the cauldron bubble class, which we have a couple of weeks to do. Um, what do you guys, I see you guys are laughing about something. I'm looking at the comments, I missed something. Hmm, I'll have to go back and look. I see my downline being silly. Hmm, I missed it, guys. All right, well, if you have questions, oh, Kathy says for Walmart, I've got, to, I've got to go out to get Halloween candy, Target, and Walmart. I've been picking up my groceries lately. I haven't been going in the store. All right, you guys, I think that's it. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks so much for joining me. Remember to share the video, please, to be entered for a prize next week. And we will be back on, what is that day, the 14th. September 14th. All right. Have a great week, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.